In my office, we practice a uh, multi-specialty approach. It just happens that I'm the specialist in multiple areas. So I'm a lab technician, I'm a prosthodontist, I'm a surgeon. The business side, just like it's the lab side, it's we're outcome driven. If I can deliver, patient is happy, and the patient doesn't come back till the recall, it's a successful case. If I have to deal with problems, and there are many problems, then uh, you know, my profitability goes down, my reputation goes down, and suddenly I'm not busy anymore. Most notably, I don't want to look like a fool. If the patient asks, how many implants do I need? You know, unless I really have a three-dimensional reconstruction, I don't know. Um, till the patient asks me, what do you know? I said, I know I need a CT scan. Okay? So for me, I need to take one early on in treatment, the first time I see the patient. So we do it at the initial visit, uh, knowing that we can build onto that CAT scan uh, with our smart fusion. So the way to really think about smart fusion is the, the, the doc takes the CAT scan without any surgical template or any, any radiographic template at the beginning uh, of the treatment. And the restorative dentist takes a, an impression, or the same person takes the impression, and sends it to you in the lab. Um, on that impression, then, you can pour up the impression, you can you do your diagnostic wax up, and then together with, with the uh, scanner, then, you can fuse all of these without any markers. You can see now I can do my cross-sections. I can mark uh, the neurovascular bundle, I can mark the nerve, I know exactly um, where I want to have my teeth. Um, I see my soft tissue contours, uh, and I can make clinical decisions um, together with my restorative team. Um, but this is the first time I can do this now without any markers. And once I come to the conclusion that this is the ideal implant position, I just have to press a button and the surgical template is generated. Okay. And, and the fit of these surgical templates, because it's based on a, on a scan of an impression, is unbelievable. So what we have now is we have a better outcome um, because it's planned, it's deliberate, and surgical time is significantly shorter than the time it takes me to do these. The software merges them automatically and you have this, and once you have, have this outline, then a, an experienced doctor can place plan and implant probably uh, takes me two minutes per implant. And let's look at this patient. Young, 20-year-old female, high lip line, and uh, seems to be in orthodontic treatment. And um, you look at those um, periapical radiographs, and you understand that she actually is no longer an orthodontic treatment. The wire is there to keep the teeth from falling out. Just look at the capabilities. So I take a CAT scan um, off, off my patient, and uh, I'll take the original model. I cut the teeth off. I'll do a diagnostic wax up. I'll put them in the 2G scanner um, and collect the digital data for this. And then I'll do my smart fusion, putting now my laboratory information Okay. my prosthetic soft tissue line tooth precision information on top of the anatomic location. And once I can combine those two, now I have complete control over the case because now I can plan. I can do my diagnostic wax up. Okay. As you can see here, I can exactly anticipate where the tissue is now, how much remodeling of the tissue I have. Uh, I can place implants. I can do virtual surgery. Am I going to place two implants? Am I going to place four implants? Where am I going to place my implant? I can do this very efficiently and professionally uh, with the software. I can play all kinds of different uh, scenarios. Am I going to place all small diameter implants because it's a crowded field and I need a little wider implant in the central? Um, can I make it screw retained? Can I make it, we have to make it cement retained? You know, I can do all these things together with the restorative dentist, and the lab member, we all can sit around and we all, everybody can have ideas. Okay? And that is the great, um, the great news. So here we see the implant being placed, a 3.5 uh, uh, Noble Active. The sleeves guide the implant to exactly where you have planted. Okay? Now there the four implants are. You take this out 
And this is a traumatic surgery, okay? There's nobody in the world that could have delivered this freehand. The key here is you basically just want to exchange the roots of the teeth with implants, but you need to do it with precision okay? and purpose and good treatment planning. So how does it apply to an everyday case? Now, this is Monday morning. You know, a case come, patient comes in, has lost a canine, suddenly decides I could use an implant, actually had a cantilever bridge uh, off or a Maryland bridge, um, you probably got to do some sort of a restoration on that premolar too. Right off the bat, you're involved because you have to scan the model. You already know what's going to happen there. Okay? You got to do a diagnostic wax up where, where now the software matches the cast, the surface topography with a three-dimensional reconstruction of the patient. There's your diagnostic wax up. If you look at the right, you can see exactly how thick is the tissue. Um, you know, what kind of a screw access do I want to have? Um, how long is the implant going to be? Um, how close to the buckle wall am I going to get? Um, and these are all questions that are important and um, we'll look at it. Now, just look at the length. I just increased now the length because I think I have plenty of space here. Now, look what I go to the view right to left, right? And what do I see? This, what's the thing in the top? Okay, the sinus is coming all the way forward to the eye canine. Okay? So I got two choices. Now I either can tip the implant into the area where they have bone, but then I don't have a nice emergence profile. So well, I just opt for placing a shorter implant. Um, and, and it's, m of course, much better to do this, to do this when, you, when you plan it, when you do it on purpose, and where there's no pressure. You know, when you drill and you suddenly drop through something and you kind of wonder, you know, you have the canine, how can the sinus be there? Well, so I can look exactly from all directions. I can look at the depth. I can look at how thick is the soft tissue. What do I need? Uh, do I have to submerge the implant? Got to countersink it? Can I kind of leave it above? What kind of abutment am I going to use? All kind of <coughs> different abutments on there. I can go through different um, procera abutments, prefabricated abutments there, and I can, I can play with it. You scan the model, you scan the wax up, um, it's one file, you send it back to the dentist, he imports it, and does the planning. Uh, once the planning is done, as we just went through there, he hits the button, and then in this case, it's a two millimeter um, guide drill uh, surgical template. If you look at how it, well it fits a good cast, meaning a good cast from a good impression material, uh, uh, because it's a surface scan, it just fits perfect. There's no rocking, there's no adjustments. Okay. We know it fits. Um, the screw hole is exactly where I envision it. Okay. It's a screw retained restoration, and if you look at the, at the final outcome, it's exactly as, as we planned it. There are no more surprises. Lateral typically is, is, is rather easy, but here, of course, the question is, where does the implant need to go in addition to the graft that I have to place? Okay. So, so we can all pre-plan. Um, you can see the, the ridge in that area has already been grafted. Um, and, and this is all from, from the Noble Clinician software after Smart Fusion. Um, so, so there's my normal uh, um, uh, reconstruction. Then we'll Smart Fuse, we have the teeth and the, the soft tissues. Um, as soon as I put on the cross section, um, and, and look at how close the, the surface scan and the teeth match, okay? So now I know exactly this is my edentulous area. You can see the graft is placed. Um, I typically place it from the occlusal, the implant. Um, everybody can kind of develop um, their own. You place a couple dots, um, automatically uh, calculates the length. You pick your implant system that you like to pick and then you place it. Um, I have great help. You can see now the implant is pretty much centered. Okay, um, on the <coughs> cross sections front to back, I can see how much buckle plate do I have left. Am I going to do it uh, cement retained, screw retained? Um, am I going to use an angled access? Um, is am I happy with the buckle plate being that thin? I would not be. So, you know, everybody can plan to what they think is the right implant placement. Okay, so there's your implant placed, adequate buckle bone. Coronal equal depth is good. Interproximal alignment is great. 
um, and, and off we go for the surgical template fabrication. There's your surgical template again. This is a um, two millimeter guide drill. I know I have to graft, so um, I'll raise the frap. I place my implant. I know exactly where I am. The implant is perfectly placed where it needs to be. You can see tissue is healing nicely, and then we'll do a final restoration. So if, if I look at the summary of the integrated workflow, the doctor end is real-time diagnosis and treatment planning. Um, you know, my time is money, the patient's time is money. There's nothing worse than to have a consultation where you do a song and dance. We call it the song and dance because we have nothing to tell the patient because we don't have the information. Okay? So uh, in order to have a meaningful discussion, I need to have the data available, the best data available. That also allows us to arrive at a, or finalize the treatment plan much faster. And it allows the technician to get involved early on. So, so that, that, will be, that will be important. If we look at the planning aspect, for me, it clearly increased my productivity. I lose a little bit of time up front. I gain a whole lot of time in surgery. The labs are finally able to participate at the beginning. So, so I think that since you have access to the scanning files early on, both of the master cast and the provisional, you can work with, with your dentist and should suggest on how you would do it. And, and it's really a first time, real time correlation between the prosthetic needs as they exist on a cast and, and clinical reality, a 3D CAT scan and the patient that's actually attached to those to those roots.